द लॉ ऑफ लीस्ट अफोर्ड इन हिज अवार्ड विनिंग बुक गर्ल्स जर्म्स एंड स्टील एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट एंड बायोलॉजिस्ट जेरिड डायमंड पॉइंट्स आउट अ सिंपल फैक्ट डिफरेंट कॉन्टिनेंट्स हैव डिफरेंट शेप्स एट फर्स्ट क्लांस दिस स्टेटमेंट सीम्स रेदर ऑबियस एंड अनइम्पॉर्टेंट बट it turns out to have a profound impact on human behavior the primary axis of the americans run from north to south that is the landmass of north and south america tends to be tall and thin rather than wide and fat the same is generally true for africa meanwhile the landmass that makes up europe asia and middle east is the opposite this massive stretch of land tends to be more east west in shape according to diamond this difference is shape played a significant role in the spread of agriculture over the centuries when agriculture began to spread around the globe farmers had an easier time expanding along east west routes than along north south ones This is because locations along the same latitude generally share similar climates, amounts of sunlight and rainfall, and changes in season. These facts allowed farmers in Europe and Asia to domesticate a few crops and grow them along the entire stretch of land from France to China. The shape of human behavior by comparison the climate varies greatly when traveling from north to south just imagine how different the weather is in florida compared to canada you can be the most talented farmer in the world but it would not help you grow florida oranges in the canadian winter snow is a poor substitute for soil in order to spread crops along north south routes farmers would need to find and domesticate new plants whenever the climate changed as a result agriculture spread two to three times faster across asia and europe than it did up and down the americans over the span of centuries these small differences had a very big impact increased food production allowed for more rapid population growth with more people these cultures were able to build stronger aims and were better equipped to develop new technologies the changes started out small a crop that spread slightly further a population that grew slightly faster but compounded into substantial differences over time the spread of agriculture provides an example of the third law of behavior change on a global scale conventional wisdom holds that motivation is the key to habit change maybe if you really wanted it you had actually do it but the truth is our real motivation is to be lazy and to do what is convenient and despite what the latest productivity best seller will tell you this is a smart strategy not a dumb one energy is precious and the brain is wired to conserve it whenever possible it is human nature to follow the law of least effort which states that when deciding between two similar options people will naturally gravitate toward the option that requires the least amount of work for example expanding your farm to the east where you can grow the same crops rather than heading north where the climate is different out of all the possible actions we could take the one that is realized is the one that delivers the most value for the least effort we are motivated to do what is easy every action requires a certain amount of energy the more energy required the less likely it is to occur if your goal is to do a 100 pushups per day that's a lot of energy in the beginning when you are motivated and excited you can muster the strength to get started but after a few days such a massive effort 
feels exhausting. Meanwhile, sticking to a habit of doing one push-ups per day requires almost no energy to get started. And the less energy a habit requires, the more likely it is to occur. Look at any behavior that fills up much of your life and you will see that it can be performed with very low levels of motivation. Habits like scrolling on your phones, checking email and watching television still so much of our time because they can be performed almost without effort. They are remarkably convenient. In a sense, every habit is just an obstacle to getting what you really want. Dieting is an obstacle to getting fit. Meditation is an obstacle to feeling calm. Journaling is an obstacle to thinking clearly. You don't actually want the habit itself. What you really want is the outcome the habit delivers. The greater the obstacle, that is, the more difficult the habit, the more friction there is between you and your desired end state. This is why it is crucial to make your habits so easy that you will do them even when you don't feel like it. If you can make your good habits more convenient, you will be more likely to follow through on them. But what about all the moments when we seem to do opposite? If we are all so lazy, then how do you explain people accomplishing hard things like raising a child or starting a business or climbing Mount Everest? Certainly, you are capable of doing very hard things. The problem is that some days you feel like doing the hard work and some days you feel like giving in. On the tough days, it's crucial to have as many things working in your favor as possible so that you can overcome the challenges life naturally throws your way. The less friction you face, the easier it is for your stronger self to emerge. The idea behind make it easy is not to only do easy things. The idea is to make it as easy as possible in the movement to do things that pay off in the long run. How to achieve more with less effort? Imagine you are holding a garden house that is bent in the middle. Some water can flow through, but not very much. If you want to increase the rate at which water passes through the house, you have two options. The first option is to crank up the value and force more water out. The second option is to simply remove the band in the hose and let water flow through naturally. Trying to pump up your motivation to stick with a hard habit is like trying to force water through a bent hose. You can do it, but it requires a lot of effort and increases the tension in your life. Meanwhile, making your habits simple and easy is like removing the band in the hose. Rather than trying to overcome the friction in your life, you reduce it. One of the most effective ways to reduce the friction associated with your habits is to practice environmental design. In Chapter 6, we discussed environment design as a method for making cues more obvious. But you can also optimize your environment to make actions easier. For example, when deciding where to practice a new habit. It is best to choose a place that is already along the path of your daily routine. Habits are easier to build when they fit into a flow of your life. You are more likely to go to the gym if it is on your way to work because stopping doesn't add much friction to your lifestyle. By comparison, if the gym is off the path of your normal commute even by just a few blocks, now you are going out of your way to get there. Perhaps even more effective is reducing the friction within your home or office. Too often we try to start habits in high friction environments. We try to follow a strict diet while we are out to dinner with friends. We try to write a book in a chaotic household. We try to concentrate 
while using a smartphone filled with distractions. It doesn't have to be this way. We can remove the points of friction that hold us back. This is precisely what electronics manufacturers in Japan began to do in the 1970s. In an article published in the New York titled Better All the Times, James writers, Japanese firms enthusiast what comes to be known as lean production, relentlessly looking to remove waste of all kinds from the production process down to redesigning workspaces so workers didn't have to waste time twisting and turning to reach their tools. The result was that Japanese factories were more efficient and Japanese products were more reliable than American ones. In 1974, service calls for American-made color televisions were five times as common as for Japanese television. By 1979, it took American workers three times as long to assemble their seats. I like to refer to this strategy as addition by subtraction. The Japanese companies looked for every point of friction in the manufacturing process and eliminated it as they subtracted wasted effort. They added customers and revenue. Similarly, when we remove the points of friction that sap our time and energy, we can achieve more and less effort. This is one reason trading up can feel so good. We are stimulously moving forward and lighting the cognitive load our environment places on us. If you look at the most habit forming products, you will notice that one of the things these goods and services do best in remove little bits of friction from your life. Meal delivery services reduce the friction of shopping for groceries. Dating apps reduce the friction of making social introductions. Ride sharing services reduce the friction of getting across town. Text messaging reduce the friction of sending a letter in the mail. Like a Japanese television manufacturer redesigning their workspace to reduce wasted motion, successful companies design their products to automate, eliminate or simply as many steps as possible. They reduce the number of feeds on each form. They pare down the numbers of clicks required to create an account. They deliver their products with easy to understand direction or ask their customers to make fewer choices. When the first voice activated, speakers were released. Products like Google Home, Amazon Echo and Apple HomePod. I asked a friend what he liked about the product he had purchased. He said it was just easier to say, play some country music, than to pull out his phone, open the music app and pick a playlist. Of course, just a few years earlier, having unlimited access of music in your pocket was a remarkably frictionless behavior compared to driving to the store and buying a CD. Business is a never-ending quest to deliver the same result in an easier fashion. Similar strategies have been used effectively by governments. When the British government wanted to increase text collections rates, they switched from sending citizens to a web page where the text form could be downloaded to linking directly to the form. Reducing that one step in the process increased the response rate from 19.2% to 23.4%. For a country like the United Kingdom, those percentage points represent millions in tax revenue. The central idea is to create an environment where doing the right thing is as easy as possible. Much of the battle of building better habits come down to finding ways to reduce the friction associated with our good habits and increase the friction associated with our bad ones. Prime the environment for future use. Oswald Nucleus is an IT developer from 
that jazz may suffice. He is also someone who understands the power of priming his environment. Oswald dialed in his cleaning habit by forming a strategy he refers to as resetting the rooms. For instance, when he finishes watching television, he places the remote back to the TV stand, arranges the pillows on the couch, and folds the blanket. When he leaves his car, he throws any trash away. Whenever he takes a shower, he wipes down the toilet while the shower is warming up. As he notes, the perfect time to clean the toilet is right before you wash yourself in the shower anyway. The purpose of resetting each room is not simply to clean up after the last action, but to prepare for the next action. When I walk into a room, everything is in its right place, Oswald wrote, because I do this every day in every room. Stuff always stays in good shape. People think I work hard, but I am actually really lazy. I am just proactively lazy. It gives you so much time back. Whenever you organize a space for its intended purpose, you are priming it to make the next action easy. For instance, my wife keeps a box of greeting cards that are presorted by occasion, birthday, sympathy, wedding, graduation, and more. Whenever necessary, she grabs an appropriate card and sends it off. She is incredibly good at remembering to send cards because she has reduced the friction of doing so. For years, I was the opposite. Someone would have a baby and I would think. I should send a card, but then weeks would pass and by the time I remembered to pick one up at the store. It was too late. The habit wasn't easy. There are many ways to prime your environment so it's ready for immediate use. If you want to cook a healthy breakfast, place the skillet on the stove, set the cooking spray on the counter, and lay out any plates and utensils you, you will need the night before. When you wake up, making breakfast will be easy. Want to draw more, put your pencil, pens, notebooks, and drawing tools on the top of your desk within easy reach. Want to exercise? Set your workout clothes, shoes, gym bag, and water bottle ahead of time. Want to improve your diet? Chop up a ton of fruits and vegetables on weekends and pack them in container so you have easy access to healthy, ready-to-eat option during the week. These are simple ways to make the good habit the path of least resistance. You can also invert the principle and prime the environment to make bad behaviors difficult. If you find yourself watching too much television, for example, then unplug it after each use. Only plug it back in if you can say out loud the name of the show you want to watch. These setups create just enough friction to prevent mindless viewing. If that doesn't do it, you can take it a step further. Unplug the television and take the batteries out of the remote after each use, so it takes an extra 10 seconds to turn it back on. And if you are really hardcore, move to television out of the living room and into a closet after each use, you can be sure you will only take it out when you really want to watch something. The greater the friction, the less likely the habit. Whenever possible, I leave my phone in a different room until lunch, when it's right next to me. I will check it all morning for no reason at all. But when it is in another room, I rarely think about it, and the friction is high enough that I won't go get it, without a reason. As a result, I get 3 to 4 hours each morning when I can work without interruption. If sticking your phone in another room doesn't seem like enough, tell a friend or family member to hide it from you for a few hours. Ask a co-worker 
to keep it at their desk in the morning and gave it back to you at lunch. It is remarkable how little friction is required to prevent unwanted behavior when I hide beer in the back of the fridge where I cannot see it. I drink less when I delete social media apps from my phone. It can be weeks before I download them again and log in. These tricks are unlikely to curb our true addiction. But for many of us, a little bit of friction can be the difference between sticking with a good habit or sliding into a bad one. Imagine the cumulative impact of making dozens of these changes and living in an environment designed to make the good behaviors easier and the bad behaviors harder. Whether we are approaching behavior change as an individual, a parent, a coach as a leader. We should ask ourselves the same question, how can we design a world where it's easy to do what's right? Redesign your life so the action that matters most are also the actions that are easiest to do.